everyone, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest, capital city of Hungary. I hope everybody has had a great start to their week, and it's fantastic to see many students in the class already. Hi, Pachu. Hi, Sanjay. Shri uh, Ram Puma Sandeep. Good to see many of you on time. Uh, this class will be speaking part one, some practice and strategy for today. Hi, Awaz. Good to see a member in the class. I'm doing great. Thank you. And this is the last live class for this week. Next week, we will start live classes on Wednesday with speaking part three. Again, while we wait for some more students, just some great information about uh, how these classes come to be. The lessons are brought to you by aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com for the academic version of the IELTS exam. We also offer services for writing, uh, editing papers for university, college, CV, statement of purpose. So there's lots more there that I've never really mentioned. And then for the general version of the exam, check us out at gieltshelp.com. That's generaliltshelp.com. And to keep up with the swing of things, uh, we are also joining the Black Friday and Cyber Monday frenzy. So when you go to our websites, you can use the code uh, BLKFDAY, that's Black Friday, uh, to get a 40% discount. That's definitely the best deal that we give all year. So uh, here are those websites. This is the academic one here. You can click that big red button to join the premium package and then you can apply the code BLKFDAY to get that 40% discount. Uh, this is the general version of our website. It's the green background, same idea. Click that big red button to join and apply the Black Friday 40% discount code. Uh, download our app, Academic IELTS Help, and we will have our general IELTS Help app out in the coming week. We're just testing it right now and doing some uh, final polishing. So that's exciting to look forward to. And uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns about the exam, um, you can contact uh, me uh, at adrian at aehelp.com. That's my name, A-D-R-I-A-N at aehelp.com. Sandeep, if you don't have a credit card, we do have some other options. Just send me an email and I can try to help you out, okay? All right, everyone. So uh, today, again, speaking part one uh, on uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, no classes. And then I will be back on the fourth with speaking part three lesson. Okay, let's warm up those speaking muscles today. Uh, let's start with some of the initial questions, meeting and greeting the examiner. Again, this is a speaking class, so make sure to speak, repeat. Okay, uh, I can't see you, I can't hear you. I can read your comments, but definitely I want to visualize that you are speaking with me and you're repeating. Uh, Prabdeep, it's great that you're in this class if your speaking is on the fourth. All right, everyone. So uh, again, go to the exam center early. Use English the day of your speaking exam. Speak in English, read English, write English. Stay with English. That can help a lot to get a better score. You walk into your exam. You stay confident. Remember, you paid for this test. You have a right to be there, be respectful. You're on equal grounds with the examiner. Uh, so be confident, visualize that they are your grandmother or your grandfather. Speak clearly, respectfully, and in full sentences. Let's just warm up. So the examiner says, welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian, I will be your examiner for this part of the test. And I'm going to record it for marking purposes. To begin, may I see your identification? It's always the first question. They have to start with that question because if you don't have your identification, they can't continue the exam. So 
Uh, may I see your identification? Awaz says, absolutely, here you are, sir. Uh, what should I do if I forget my ID? Uh, Awaz, if you forget your ID, they will say, sorry, you can't sit the exam. Uh, please come back another day. Okay. Um, Sandeep says, yes, you may. Uh, be a little bit more expressive, Sandeep. So, yes, you may. Here it is. Please take a look. Okay. Be expressive. Students, show your expressive fluency right away. Okay. Namalikanti uh, Mahesh says, here it is, ma'am. You need at least an is. Okay. Be expressive. Roshni says, certainly, yes, here it is. Please have a look, sir or madam. Uh, Sue says, sure, here you are. Please have a look at my passport. If it's your passport, absolutely. Okay, good. Excellent. Yaran, Gabrielle says, of course, here it is. Please take a look. Okay, uh, please take a look or please have a look is definitely a nice, polite way to lead into that question. Um, okay, so yes, of course, here is my passport. This is the ID that I used to register for this exam. Please take a look. So this is a nice, fluent sentence, and it's also original, respectful. Um, this is the ID that I used to register for this exam because you have to have the same ID with you that you used to register. So if you used your passport to register, take your passport. If you used your national ID, your driver's license, make sure to have your national ID or driver's license. When you say, this is the ID I used to register for the exam, then the examiner is relieved. They'll know that, okay, then it should match with their paper, the number of your identification, all right? So again, repeat after me. May I see your identification? Please, students, repeat questions as well as answers, okay? Yes, of course, here's my passport. This is the ID I used to register for this exam. Please take a look. Okay, then they'll hold on to your identification. They'll check your name, they'll look at your face, they'll look at the picture on the ID, and then they'll say, what is your full name? So what is your full name? It always follows the uh, asking for the ID because they're matching you with your ID and they're checking off on their paper that yes, this candidate has this ID and they are the same candidate as the registration paper. Okay. So Moro says, my given name is Morteza and my family name is Sadiqi. Please call me by my nickname, Mori. Moro, very good. Yeah, that's great. And I love how you included your nickname because they always ask, what should I call you? So you might as well preempt that question. Okay, you might as well say that, all right? Afreen Afreen says, my name is Nikat Afreen. Please call me Nikat, okay? So tell the examiner what you want them to call you because that's their next question. And if you tell them that, it shows that you prepared for the exam and you're ready to express your highest level of English, okay? Anish says, my first name is and my family name is and you can call me. Sure, Anish, spell it out, okay? Don't take shortcuts. Uh, Kawal Kamboj says, my full name is Kawal Krishan uh, Kamboj. Please call me Kawal. Okay, good. Uh, my name is Preet Patel. You can call me Price. You can call me by my nickname, Price. Uh, Preet, give your full name, okay, as it appears on your passport. Roshni says, my given name is Roshni and my surname is Kunte. Please Call me by my first name, Roshni. That's very good, okay? So, uh, my full name is Andreas Weiss. Um, please call me by my first name, Andreas, okay? So, uh, just making up a name. 
Uh, again, repeat after me. What is your full name? My full name is Andreas Ways. Uh, please call me by my first name, Andreas. Okay. And uh, from that, we know that your um, family name or your surname is likely Ways. Okay. All right, and then comes a couple of questions to just make you feel comfortable. Uh, now, this is where the examiner might be smiling at you like, hi, how are you? Um, don't let that fool you. They're there to mark you. They're there to assess you. They are not your pal. They're not your friend. They're not your enemy, okay? Uh, they're simply there to assess your English speaking ability. So focus. Okay, throughout, remember your job, you're there to get a high band score. Okay, um, so they might ask you, how are you doing today? Okay, um, and give me a nice full sentence for that one. Okay, give me a nice, clear, full sentence for how are you doing today? Kewal says, nah, not too bad. Why, Kewal? Uh, my young says, pretty good. Moro says, I'm so tired as I'm looking forward to an astonishing IELTS outcome in order to achieve my ambitions, which is enrollment in university. Okay, Moro, it's very expressive, and you are on the right track. You should be expressive on the exam. Uh, Violet Nguyen says, I'm very nervous, excited, and happy at the same time. And how are you? Very good, Violet. That's a beautiful answer. Okay. Um... I'm feeling quite nervous and excited at the same time in hopes of doing well on this exam. How are you and how are you doing? Okay, it's definitely polite to ask back uh, to the examiner if they ask you, how are you doing? How are you doing, right? It's polite, okay? Uh, if you just give an answer like, I'm fine, thank you. At least say, and how are you? Okay. Now, this is a much better answer than this. Um, giving reasons, okay, that's one of the most important ideas to keep in mind throughout your speaking is give reasons. So this is my first tip for you today, okay, is always give reasons for your answers, even for a simple question like, how are you doing? If you're feeling nervous, explain why you're feeling nervous, okay? So tip number one always be thinking of giving reasons for your answers. Okay, that those are the explanations. Okay. Even for a simple question, like how are you doing? Okay. Show your fluency. They only have uh, 12 minutes to assess your English level. So if you have a nice high level of English, make sure you show that to your examiner. Okay. All right. Um, Roshni says, I'm doing great today. More excited for this exam and a little bit nervous too. And I hope that this IELTS exam will go well. A good Roshni. That's a nice answer. Um, Pachu says, I'm feeling good because yesterday my listening, reading, and writing part of the exam went really well. Very good, Pachu. Uh, Coolbeer says, I'm uh, preparing for the IELTS exam. Um, hopefully, I will get a higher score in each module. Um, okay, how are you feeling though, Coolbeer? Make sure to include that information. Okay. All right. So... Let's go to the next question. What do you do to relax? OK, 
Okay, it's a very common icebreaker question for the examiners. Okay, so what do you do to relax? Again, answer and give an explanation, at least. Moro says, well, that's such an unexpected question. I usually uh, go to um, the countryside as it's a uh, uh, place with astonishing scenery and helps me to be calm. Dong Pham says, you know, after a down day, I usually let steam off by listening to music or watching my favorite comedy. Um, after a downer day, Dong Pham, downer day. Okay, if you want to use that expression, D-O-N-E-R. Okay, um, Awaz says to relax. I like to sit in a quiet room and watch a comedy with my family, especially in the evenings. Just yesterday, we watched 90 minutes of Mr. Bean, and we had some great laughs. Awaz, good job. You remembered that, hey, wait a second, it's a good idea to throw an example in there as well. And that's my tip two for you today, okay? For roughly about 60%, it's hard to say this exactly, but for about 60% of your responses, you should be thinking about a smooth flowing example. So for roughly, and it the questions will lend themselves which ones require an example or which ones make sense to include an example. So for I would say roughly 60% of uh, questions, especially part one and three, you should be thinking about a smooth flowing example to clarify your ideas, okay? Now, a little bit more explanation here. So don't use uh, for example. If you say for example once, maybe twice in the speaking, it's okay. Um, but uh, examiners sometimes get a little bit scared that the candidate will just talk and talk and talk when they say for example. So some examiners will interrupt students when they use, for example. So instead of using, for example, use words uh, such as like, just, or simply state the example. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. All right. So again, remember, for about 60% of the questions, just pay attention to the question, which ones this works well for, uh, you should include that example, just like Awaz showed us. So uh, what do you do to relax? Well, in order to unwind, especially in the evenings after a tough day at the office. I like to watch a comedy uh, flick or series with my family. Yesterday, Around 7 p.m., I watched a couple episodes of Mr. Bean with my family, and we shared some good laughs, okay? And again, of course, you need to practice your fluency so that you can get these sentences out quickly. Now, notice that I'm not actually saying all that much here. In fact, um, it's just one sentence. It's a long, complex sentence, but it's still just one sentence. Sometimes students ask me, how long should I speak for these responses? Uh, two to three sentences at most, OK? 
okay? You shouldn't just keep rambling until the examiner stops you. That's really bad, all right? Especially if you're going off topic. So here we go. Repeat after me. What do you do to relax? Well, in order to unwind, especially in the evenings after a tough day at the office, I like to watch a comedy flick or a series with my family. Yesterday, around 7 p.m., I watched a couple of episodes of Mr. Bean with my family, and we shared some good laughs. Okay, so nice and fluent, obviously, that's important. Uh, notice how here I don't say, for example, for instance, or even just the other day. I simply give my example. It's very clear, the connection, because the information is so tightly related. Okay, yesterday around 7 p.m., I watched a couple episodes of Mr. Bean with my family and we shared some good laughs. Okay, so as we do part one, students, uh, make sure to focus on answer, explanation, and example. Use your vocabulary. This is a great time uh, in the chat to test the words that you know, see if they make sense in context. Uh, paraphrase, that means use synonyms, okay? Um, here we go. So the examiner will say, okay, uh, now I will ask you some more questions on a general topic. Uh, let's talk about drawing. All right. How often do you draw pictures? Okay. So how often do you draw pictures? Give me a nice a full sentence answer for that. Now, keep in mind, students, that even if you're not a Picasso, a big time art lover, or a fan of drawing, you should still focus here and believe that you have some interest in drawing. Okay. All right. So, um, Dong Fan says, well, honestly, I rarely draw pictures because I'm not uh, a fan of the arts and I have difficulty creating beautiful paintings. Okay, Dong Fam, not bad. Just be careful. Even if it's the truth, speaking in the negative is a lot more difficult than speaking in the positive. And this is an interesting tip, students. You might want to just uh, use your imagination and be creative and pretend that you do like drawing because it might be easier to exp explain and express yourself than if you say you don't like to draw, okay? Uh, Hassan says, when I studied architectural engineering at University of Technology, I used to sketch and draw pictures day and night, and drawing is an integral part of my study. Hassan, it's about you. Keep it about you. Okay, don't say our study. We're not talking about your classmates and your professors, just you. Okay. Um, now you're using the past tense, Hassan, when I studied. Uh, it might be better to just generalize it. As I study architectural engineering, I sketch and draw day and night. Drawing is an integral part of my study. That's the way I would answer it, Hassan, using that information. Okay. Awaz says, well, I'm not really into drawing. However, I sometimes help my little brother draw simple figures like uh, rectangles and circles to describe a landscape. Good, Awaz. So um, you, you're using sometimes or rarely. Okay, you need that um, adverb of frequency. All right. That's what these questions. Uh, Questions are looking for how often, always, usually, frequently, sometimes, rarely, never, okay? You need to use those adverbs of frequency for this question. Xara Papa says, I often draw when I wish to express myself. When I feel depressed, I express myself by... Uh, creating landscapes or sketching landscapes. Very good. Luo says, I usually draw pictures if my niece asks me to uh, draw an example of her science assignment. 
Luo, very good. Just watch your order of words. Excellent. Okay. Uh, again, students, it's very important. Engage the topic. Okay. You're not really there to talk about drawing. You're there to show your English skills. The topic just happens to be drawing. So engage the topic. Uh, Yoran Gabriel Melo says, well, to be honest, I rarely draw pictures, almost never, because I'm extremely bad at it. Um, however, on the occasional uh, day, I do find myself sketching a stick man or two, especially if I'm feeling bored. Uh, so again, Yoran, find a little bit of positive in there. Okay, You don't want to shut down the topic. Otherwise, you're going to get into trouble, all right? Jovelio Sulangi says, well, actually, um, I draw quite often these weeks because my nephew really likes to draw and we've been sharing our activities. Uh, last week, we drew some cars. Uh, Jovelio, very nice, okay? So... Um, So these days, I frequently find myself uh, drawing pictures. Since I'm hanging out with my five-year-old nephew at least four to five times a week and he is really into art these days just uh, last saturday we were drawing cars Excellent. Okay. Be creative. Be imaginative. Most of us do draw. Okay. Believe it or not, drawing is actually a part of our life, uh, if not always, at least intermittently uh, with family, friends, or for studies. Um, so, uh, again, a very important tip here. Okay. And I'm going to list it here. So, this is tip three. Okay. Even if a topic seems to be distant, you must bring it close and imagine that you do enjoy it as it is easier to express positive concepts than negative ones. And that's true um, in whether you're speaking a foreign language like English or if you're speaking your own language, okay? It's always easier to express a positive thought that you actually do enjoy doing something even if you don't do it as often as you think, okay? So uh, again, uh, repeat after me. Here we go. How often do you draw pictures? These days I frequently find myself drawing pictures since I'm hanging out with my five-year-old nephew at least four to five times a week. And he is really into art these days. Just last Saturday we were drawing cars. Okay. Um, now this is a high band uh, Answer, of course, uh, you're giving your adverb of frequency, so frequently drawing, okay? You're using the question to give a correct answer. You're using a complex sentence since. Since is showing uh, cause and effect, okay? So it's giving reason for the listener. Uh, hanging out is some nice natural uh, language. Uh, he is really into art. To be into means to enjoy. It's, again, nice, natural, idiomatic language. Uh, giving an example, last Saturday we were drawing cars. It's very visual. 
and I'm using quantitative language, five-year-old nephew, four to five times a week, okay? It's a very clear description. Make sure to use quantitative language and practice these elements that I just listed, okay? It's very, very important. <coughs> All right, let's go to the next question. What kinds of pictures do you like drawing? What kinds of pictures? And students, if I miss your comments at times, don't worry, I'll catch different students at different times, okay? So what kinds of pictures do you like drawing? Moro says, hmm, it vastly depends on my children's expectation as most of the time um, they are uh, precisely focusing on fictional cartoon characters, which they have seen that day, like uh, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck. Uh, Xara Papa says, I'm keen on drawing anything related to landscapes. I even like abstract art and therefore I draw objects, uh, places in complex ways to reflect my imagination. Nice, Xana. Okay. Uh, again, students, I'm, um, correcting in real time. So pay close attention to my corrections. Uh, if you catch me correcting your comment, you can always mark the time in the video. Uh, so the time for the last one was about 31 minutes. And then you can always go back and check that, see how I changed your answer and think about why I changed your answer in that way, okay? So Kowal Kambaj says, I really like drawing pictures of nature, uh, like beautiful trees, clouds, and birds. Uh, Kowal, don't forget your verbs. Okay, drawing pictures or sketching pictures. Okay. Abdi Kafi Guled says, well, this is an ex unexpected question, uh, but it's uh, normal people tired in rooting life. Abdi Kafi, I'm quite confused by what you're trying to say with that. And s the examiner will be too, so make sure to rethink it. Be clear, okay? Uh, Barinder Jassal says, most of the time I like to draw pictures of famous personalities from different eras, <coughs> like sports actors and famous politicians. Barinder, uh, can you give me an example of a famous person that you've recently drawn? Okay, a recent athlete. Okay, you could say I painted a fantastic picture of Ronaldo just the other day, right? So throw an example, and especially when you say you like drawing famous personalities, it's an excellent opportunity to throw in an example of somebody that you might have drawn. All right. <clears throat> Saloni Shah says, okay, and again, make sure you're speaking, students, not just writing, so write and speak. Saloni says, I'm very fond of sketching eyes. There's a saying that eyes are the mirror into the soul. Uh, so this inspires me to draw, and I have at least 15 different sketches of eyes that express different emotions. Salani, very nice. Um, the eyes are the mirrors into the soul is the expression that we usually use, okay? Uh, Mr. Beck says, actually, it depends on um, my inspiration because I usually draw uh, pictures when I'm motivated by an object, a landscape, or a person that I see. Most of the time, I prefer to draw dragons and various cartoon characters. Mr. Beck, very good. Uh, nice answer there. Okay. 
Let's see, one more. Huang Lenyuin says, graffiti is one of my favorite types of art. It's a kind of creative art uh, with uh, mathematical knowledge. And um, I create it using some geometric blocks uh, with uh, spray paint and often uh, letters of the alphabet. Right, Huang? Very good. All right. So, <clears throat> well, as I had just mentioned, I'm drawing when I'm interacting with my nephew. So most of the time, it's either cars or some of his favorite uh, cartoon uh, characters like Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. Okay, all right. Uh, repeat after me. What kinds of pictures do you like drawing? Why? Well, as I had just mentioned, um, I'm drawing when I'm interacting with my nephew. So most of the time it's either cars or some of his favorite cartoon characters like Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. All right. So again, concise answer, clear answer, giving an, uh, a reason, giving an example, and uh, I'm connecting. Okay, well, as I had just mentioned, right? I mean, I did just mention that I'm usually drawing when I'm around my nephew and we were drawing cars. So why would I go off topic? Um, it's better to make those connections when you can. So that's my uh, tip number four is connect your ideas. Okay, tip number three is in script. So I'll put tip four here. Okay, tip four. Keep your answers in mind. And make connections among them when possible. This will help your coherence, fluency, and complexity scores. Okay, so keep that tip in mind. All right. Make those connections. I know a couple of you did. Uh, one of you said you like to draw landscapes and you said that's what you enjoy drawing the most. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next question. Here we go. Uh, how can you improve your drawing skills? How can you improve your drawing skills? What can you do? Funniest video says once a week I can go and take extra lessons to improve my drawing skills as it may be uh, necessary for my future career. I didn't see what your future career is. Funniest videos in your earlier comments, but maybe it's related. Ajit. Dajic says, well, it is said that practice makes perfect. So drawing skills can be improved by uh, just drawing pictures daily, uh, various uh, different shapes and objects by freehand, and maybe even some abstract drawings. Okay, uh, yeah, Ajit, not bad. Okay, I colored your response a little bit there. Suggest one name has a very good answer. Suggest one name says the internet provides various sources which can be helpful for a person to improve their artistic skills. For instance, I can go online uh, and find a YouTube trainer free of cost and learn how to draw some pictures. Uh, suggest one name that's good. Uh, just again, remember students, part one especially, it's about you and your drawing skills. So you really need to focus on you. Don't start talking about what people can do to improve their drawing skills. 
This is specifically asking what can you do to uh, improve your drawing skills. So you have to make sure that when the question is you and your, you're saying me, my, I, myself. Okay, it's very important. Okay, Ms. Infinity says, I can practice more by myself to develop my skills further. Maybe allocate 30 minutes in the evening to drawing pictures of people. Awaz Aksmadov says, hmm, if I could improve my drawing skills, I would definitely learn to draw cars uh, and maybe attend some courses related to this. Okay, I was a little bit awkward, careful. Eros Etri says, there's a proverb that practice makes perfect. Um, so definitely just spending at least a couple hours drawing each day could improve my skills. Okay. Um, again, so in uh, English, we don't say practice makes a man perfect. We just simplify it to practice makes perfect. Okay. So as the saying goes, and it's not a proverb, it's not a really biblical as far as I know, as the saying goes, practice makes perfect. So I suppose that I could uh, spend uh, half an hour at least a few times a week honing my artistic skills also i think watching some lessons on youtube uh, would really improve my technical knowledge of art. Okay, all right. So here we go, repeat after me. How can you improve your drawing skills? As the saying goes, practice makes perfect. So I suppose that I could spend half an hour, at least a few times a week honing my artistic skills. Also, I think watching some lessons on YouTube would really improve my technical knowledge of art, okay? Again, be expressive. Um, I know that sometimes students um, use a, a, uh, an expression or an idiom and they think that that's great, I've got a band nine, and they're super happy with their answer and then they're like, okay, let's go to the next question. Um, it's not enough, so, uh, I, and I've see, I see some students doing this all the time where they'll say something like, well, as the saying goes, uh, practice makes perfect. So I could do that. And then they stop. Okay. That's a really short response. All right. Um, and uh, just because you use the, the expression practice makes perfect, it's not going to earn you a band nine. Okay. Just because you throw a couple idioms in there, it's not gonna earn you a band nine. You still have to be more expressive. It's more valuable to clearly explain yourself, like spend half an hour at least a few times a week honing my artistic skills. This is a much more valuable uh, phrase than practice makes perfect. This is showing a higher level of communication, quantitative language, nice high level vocabulary, honing, uh, my skills. So you want to express yourself, students, express yourselves. Okay. All right. Next question. Do you use technology to help you draw or create pictures? If yes, why? Okay. So give me a nice full sentence answer for that one. Do you use technology to help you draw or create pictures? If yes, why? Okay, nice full sentence. Nice full sentence. Again, 
think about. Answer, explanation. If your answers don't come to mind right away, use a leading expression like, hmm, uh, that's an unexpected question. Uh, please allow me a moment to uh, consider. Okay, and that buys you a little bit of time to think about your answer. Rihan Mahmoud says, to exchange information with deaf people, um, we can use drawings and also uh, praying where viable communication is prohibited, like um, when I communicate with my deaf cousin. I'm not sure what you're saying there, Rihan. I think you missed the question is, do you use technology to help you draw or create pictures? If yes, why? Okay. All right. I'm just skipping. I'm jumping because I know that students are preloading their questions, uh, Jihad. So sometimes uh, I'll skip a question so that we don't get these preloaded answers. Uh, Nilma says, as the advancement of technology, people nowadays use tech, uh, I suppose, because it's much easier and faster. Uh, Nelma Nelson, again, do you use technology, not people? Students, if you generalize your answer, then um, you're going to lose band, mar uh, band scores, okay? So don't generalize your answer. It's about you. Um, wow says recently I have tried drawing on my iPad. There are several good apps that allows me to sketch on digital products. I actually enjoy it quite a bit because my pictures turn out much better than by freehand. Wow. Very good. Just finish the idea. Very good. Okay. Mr. Beck says, yes, uh, probably I do. I frequently utilize social media such as YouTube and Instagram. Actually, I have subscribed on some artistic channels that teach people how to draw. Okay, that's kind of all right, Mr. Beck. Uh, Sandeep says, of course, I get help from YouTube and drawing apps to draw pictures um, because they turn out much better than when I'm just uh, sketching by freehand. Good. Uh, Danielle uh, Tarasov says, I frequently use Adobe Photoshop to illustrate my ideas. I find the application essential um, because it allows me to create perfect straight shapes and straight lines uh, by clicking buttons. Very good, Daniel. Nice answer. Don't repeat yourself. Essential and useful. It's not exactly repetition, but it's, oh, it's a little bit unnecessary wordiness. Alexei Burbanov says, yes, I uh, use some technology for my drawing like iPad uh, with Apple Pen, but uh, I also definitely like uh, drawing with the classic pencil. Good. Just don't go off topic because we are talking about technology here. Okay. All right. Ivan, nice. Some members joining in a little bit late, but good to see you members. Yvonne says, I use a program called Photoshop. It's a very uh, interesting tool to help me create various pictures with different visual effects. Excellent. Okay. So <clears throat> check this out, students. Uh, indeed, I use both hardware and software to enhance my uh, drawing skills, specifically... I use uh, an iPad to draw on as well as um, a software called Photoshop which allows me to quickly and effectively edit my pictures and make them more representative of my imagination. All right, so there's a nice high complex band nine 
response for us to finish on. Here we go. Repeat after me. Do you use technology to help you draw or create pictures? If yes, why? Hmm. It's an unexpected question. Please allow me a moment to consider. Indeed, I use both hardware and software to enhance my drawing skills. Specifically, I use iPad to draw on as well as software called Photoshop, which allows me to quickly and effectively edit my pictures and make them more representative of my imagination. Okay, notice this use of correlative conjunction, both hardware and software, right? So threw in one of those. Okay, so uh, two questions remaining uh, in today's uh, speaking class. This one here that was beforehand. What are situation when drawing pictures can help you uh, communicate? If you could draw one amazing picture, what would it be? I will leave those two questions for you to try for homework. You can record your answers in MP3 format. Please make sure it's an MP3 format. And you can send your answers to my email and I can send you a score estimate, roughly what band level you're speaking uh, would receive. So adrian at aehelp.com. Again, students, for lots more practice, practice exams, over 100 hours of video lessons, and a fully interactive course for your phone, tablet, PC, uh, check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general. And for the next couple of days, we have our Black Friday uh, discount of 40%, as I mentioned at the beginning of class. You just have to use the code BLKFDAY. This is a limited time offer, just like all of the other companies and businesses doing Black Friday discounts. So again, aehelp.com is with the blue background here. Click that big red button to join. And uh, the general version of our website is this here. Click that big red button to join and begin your journey for IELTS success. That's it for me for today, students. I'm sorry if I've missed some of your responses. Nevertheless, keep practicing, keep your head up, push forward. You are all brilliant people. You have supercomputers and then some sitting on your shoulders. Remember that and have an awesome rest of your weekend. I will see you on Wednesday. Much love from Budapest. Bye for now.